Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to learn about the other views that we have been discussed in the previous videos. So we're going to start first with the floating action button, or short for fab with the B. So fab is just a circular button that comes from the material library and it's pretty similar to the normal button that we are used to. However, the fabs are usually used to be not part of the layout, it just goes on top of the layout so it's just elevated from the surface of the screen or elevated above your actual layout. And when we talk about the fab, we're not talking about something new. I'm pretty sure that you have seen the fab before within your mobile device applications. So if you for example open the messages app, you can see here we have a fab to create a new message. Additionally, within your contacts application, you can see the fab here which opens the numbers pad and it's where you can dial a number and add the context and the message etc etc and here you can also see it here the dial button here is also a fab where you click on it and it will dial the number that you are calling now let's move to how to create a fab so again we'll move to the palette and we will just type a fab here within the search then we will take our fab and drop it to the canvas and once you do so, Android Studio will ask you to create an icon for this fab or to choose an icon for your fab. So let's just choose the IC Android here. Now let's look at the different attributes of the fab. So the first thing that I want you to look at is the SRC attribute that we have discussed within the image views video. So as a revision, the SRC here is used to give a vector icon or an image to your image view. Now how we can customize this fab, how we can change the color of the background and the color of the icon? Well, this is easily done with the background tint attribute that we also have used it before with the button and to just add a color to the background of the fab. So if you add a white color, you can see here our fab is having a white color. Additionally for the icon, so you can change the color of the icon with the app tint attribute and here refer to a color from the color resource and here for example I'm going to make it black. Just make sure that the tint attribute is with the app and not Android. Now let's talk about the other attributes as well. We have an attribute called fab size which changes the size of your fab. So here this is the normal size or the default value for the fab size. We have the mini which compacts the fab and make it smaller around 40 dB for the width and the height and we have auto here which it just follows your values that you provide for the width and the height additionally we have the elevation attribute choose the app one and not the android and here you can provide a value in dB to control the shadow of your fab so this just controls how far is your button from the screen so if I provide for example 16 dp, you can see here our fab casting more shadow on the screen just like it's slightly off the screen. If you increase this around 100 dp, you can see more shadow is there and just you cannot just see it because it's beyond the fab. And you can just play around with the elevation until you get your desired value. Now additionally we have the pressed translation Z which controls the shadow of your fab whenever it's clicked and you cannot see this if we didn't run our application so let's just run it without having the translation z to see how it's pressed without the translation z attribute and here you can see our fab with some shadow around it if you click on it you can see its shadow doesn't change that much only a ripple effect or an effect once you click on the fab is applied so if we have our translation z attribute so let's just add it pressed translation z maybe 100 dp they just run and once you click on the fab you can see the shadow is changed it's like you press it onto the screen it's like it's pushed back to the screen rather than being elevated once it's pressed additionally we have the ripple color attribute which changes the ripple color or the the color of the ripple effect that you see once you click on the fab so once you click on the fab here you can see a gray color is applied to the fab and if we just change the ripple color here for example to purple which will be more evident you can see once you click on it the color is changed to purple just to tell the user that this fab is being clicked and it is responsive now we have this clickable attribute which is set to true so the fabs are by default clickable so we'll just delete it 
And now let's see how we can add a click listener to the fab to add just a simple functionality. So whenever we click on the fab, we want to change the color of the background and the color of the icon and change the icon itself. So we'll go to the main activity and here we will add our code. So the first thing that we want to do is to add a click listener to our fab. So binding dot floating action button five, this is the ID of the fab, puts it on click listener. And here, what we want to do is to change the icon of the fab. So you can do this again by referring to the fab dot sit image. And here we have multiple variations for the sit image. You have used the sit robo in the image view video before. And in this video, we are going to use the sit image resource. And what we have to pass here is a drawable resource from our drawable. So r.drawable.ic face. And now we want to change the color of the background. Again, binding, holding action button 5, dot background tint list. And here with the background tint list, we can change the color of the background by referring to the context combat get color state method. And the get color state here is used to get a color from your resource and apply it to the background tint list or the background color of your floating action button. So here it requires a context, so we'll pass this as the activity. And now color resource from our color, so r.color.white. And similarly to change the color of our icon, binding dot floating action button dot image tint list. Again, we will call the context combat dot get color state list. This as the context and r dot color dot black. Now, whenever you click on the floating action button, it will change the icon, the color of the icon and the color of the background. So we want to make it more reusable. So we want to reverse our changes once we click on it for the second time. For this, again, we create a flag var, I was just gonna call it is changed equal to false and i'll check here if not it's changed so if our floating action button is not changed then i want to change it so is changed and we will add the not operator and here this statement here is going to be true so we want to execute these three statements and lastly we want to change is changed to true because we changed the fab and I misspelled it, so it must be it's changed. So we have a shortcut to rename this variable with shift F6, then is changed, and it will change the is change to is change everywhere we called it. Now we will make the is change to true, and else we want to just reverse all these changes. So we want to make it I see Android just like before and the color of the background is going to be black the color of the icon is going to be white now before you run you have to delete the tint attribute or the background tint attribute as the background tint list here won't work if you have the background tint attribute within your layout so i'm just going to delete it and we are going to run our application now here's our fab if you click on it it will change to white click on it again it will change to black black we, we just forgot to make it false here after the else block so make sure to make it so we're just gonna make it very quickly and you can see here once you click on it it will change and ripple effect is also applied along with the translation z for the shadow of the floating action button so now we are going to talk about the switch ui component which is a user interface element that allows you to toggle it between two states on or off to for example enable certain features within your application or modify the settings so let's just drop a switch from our palette and here we are going to learn how we can customize the switch and talk about the different attributes of it so as you can see here we can add a text to the switch to describe what this switch is used for so let me just center it horizontally within the parent and attach it to the top of the parent and make it 0 dB for the width. And here I'm just going to change the text to enable toast pop-ups. Now by default the state of the switch is off. So you can change this with the checked attribute. Make it false. It will be false which is the default. And true will make it set to on. You can see the changes here affecting our switch. 
Now we have an attribute called show text, which is used to show the text on top of the switch. So if you set it to true, you can see here we have on on top of the switch. Set it to false, the text will disappear. Let's set it to true and let's modify the text on top of the switch. So if you want to change the text of the switch or the text on top of the switch, you can do this with text on and here maybe set it to it is on and if you want to change the text of the off state you can do this with text off again it is off it is off and if you set it to not checked to false you can see it is off here is set on top of the switch now let's see how we can play around with the switch programmatically so I'm just going to delete the show text and text on and text off all together and here I'll just add a text view to our layout and it will be at the bottom of the switch and centered horizontally within the pad let's give it an ID it's really given an ID text view let's go to the main activity and play around with the switch so for the switch you can get the state or the current state of the switch with the is checked attribute or the is checked is checked property syntax here you can see if you just add is checked it will turn true or false depending on the value of the switch additionally you can change this value if you assign it to true or false for example when the button is clicked or for example when the text of the edit text is changed but it would be more interesting if we have a listener for the state of the switch and indeed we have a checked listener for our switch so if you call the set on checked listener you can see here we have a couple of variations for this second click listener let's just use the original one here that takes an instance of the unchecked listener interface from the compound button class so here we will again create an object and make this object extend compound button Band button on checked listener interface and then open the curly braces and here you have to implement the members of the unchecked listener interface Control i and add the function now you can see here under studio tells us that we can convert this to a lambda so if you just hover here and click on convert to lambda it will be converted to a lambda function where it passes the button view or the view that you clicked on or the current view which is the switch in this case and the current state of the switch so here we will check if the switch is switch on or is checked in this case we want to change the visibility of the text view so binding dot text view dot is visible equal to true now if it's not switched we want to make it false so binding dot text view dot is visible equal to false and just to make this more convenient we will change the text of the switched to show text and if you go back you can see we can get rid of this whole code by just saying that binding dot text view dot is visible equal to the is checked so if the is checked is true so if the switch is checked on the text view will be visible otherwise it will be not visible so if we run it's by default off so the text view is still shown because we didn't make it on make it on the text view again will show if you make it false the text view is gone make it on the text view is shown again now if you go back to the main activity you can see this whole warning saying that you should not use the switch rather you should use the switch combat or the switch material from the material library as the switch here may not function the way it is on older android versions or older android devices so instead of the normal switch we will use the switch combat from the support library now if you want to change the color of the switch or the color of the thumb of the switch along with the track of the switch you can use the track tint attribute to change the color of the track you can see here color is changed to purple along with the thumb tint you can add for example black the thumb is changed to black you can also add your own thumb if you have a drawable for example an IC face the thumb is changed to the face drawable and if you want to split the track of the switch you can use the split track attribute if you make it to true you can see that the track of the switch is split to half 
Now let's talk about the toggle button, which is pretty similar to the switch. You can toggle it off or on to enable certain actions, some settings or features and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to drop it here instead of the switch. And again, we're going to center it to the parent horizontally and attach it to the top of the parent. And instead of just making the text attached to the bottom of the switch, which is deleted now, we will make it attached to the toggle button. Now we will use the same attributes that we used with the switch. For example, text on for the when the state of the toggle button is on. So it is on and the text off and the checked attribute, make it false, make it true. You can see the text it change and you can see here we have this bottom bar which indicates that the current state of the toggle button is on. You can also change the background of the toggle button with the background tint. Make it for example purple and change the text color with the text color attribute and make it white. And we'll just implement the same functionality for our toggle button here that we did with the switch. Just change the switch here to the toggle button and let's just run. So we set the toggle button by default to on with the checked attribute. You can see here it's on, the text is shown. If you make it off, the text is not shown. So just similar to the switch, however it doesn't have any text around it, doesn't have something around it, but use cases for using the toggle button are similar to the switch. Now let's move to the checkbox, which is pretty much self-explanatory, just a UI element that you can toggle off or on, just like the switch, just like the toggle button, and also you can use it with the same use cases. So instead of just having the toggle button, we will have the checkbox. Let's just delete the toggle button here, center the checkbox horizontally and attach it to the top of the parent and attach the top of the text view to the bottom of the checkbox. Now let's discover the attributes of the checkbox. So it's called a checkbox. So we have an attribute called checked that determines if it's checked or not. So by default, it's false. Make it true. You can see the check mark here within the box of the checkbox. You can also change the color of the checked mark here with button tint. Button tint. Make it, for example, black. You can see it changed to black. And additionally, for the text of the check mark, you can play around with the text attribute show text. And if you want to change the whole background of the whole view of the checkbox, you can use the background attribute to change the color or the background color of your checkbox. Now again, as we did before with our text view, so we will just toggle the visibility of the text view with the checkbox, that of the toggle button, we we'll use the sit on checked change listener with the checkbox and it will function the same as before where we did that with the toggle button and the switch. You can see here, make it false, it's false, make it true, it's true. And you can see that little animation that is happening when you toggle between the two states of the checkbox. And if you want to change the button tint color for your checkbox programmatically, you can do this with the button tint list property syntax or function. So here again, we will use the context combat get color state list this as the context and a color from our color resource. For example, teal 700. And if we run, you can see once we toggle it, the color is changed to teal 700. So that was it for this video. I want to talk more about other views, but it will be rather a very long video. So we'll save them for the next video. So thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next video.